This means my blood of the covenant. And we're going to be discussing what a simple meal teaches us about a heavenly king. And to preview, preview this lesson, it is said, we will soon be attending the Lord's evening meal to commemorate the death of Jesus Christ. This simple meal teaches us much about Jesus' humility, courage, and love. In this article, we will discuss how we can imitate the precious qualities he displayed. And once again, as we go through the lesson, these qualities are humility, courage, and love. And it really emphasizes love for one another in the congregation. That's what we want to draw from Jesus' example here. So let's get on the way with the reading of paragraphs 1 and 2, please. Can you describe what takes place at the annual memorial of Christ's death? No doubt, most of us can recall the basic details of the Lord's evening meal. Why? Because the meal is so uncomplicated. However, this is a significant event. So we might ask, why is the meal so simple? During his earthly ministry, Jesus was known for teaching important truths in a way that was simple, clear, and easy to understand. In the same way, he provided us with a simple yet meaningful way to commemorate his death. The footnote reads, expression explained. To commemorate means to do something special in order to remember and honor an important event or person. Let us consider closely this memorial meal and some of the things Jesus said and did. We will appreciate even more just how humble, courageous, and loving Jesus really is, and we will learn how we can imitate him more closely. A question. Why can we expect that Jesus would provide us with a simple way to commemorate his death? That's Sister White. Well, we know that during his earthly ministry, he was known for teaching uh, truths in a way that was really simple, clear, and easy to understand. So then that would be the same thing that we could expect that he would do when he uh, set up that meaningful uh, commem commemoration of his death. It also would be simple, even though it was very significant. Yes, thank you. And Sister Smith, please. And also Matthew um, chapter seven brings out a good point. It brings out that when the crowd was listening at Jesus, they was astonished at his way of teaching, because he was teaching them as a person having authority, but not as a scribe. So therefore, we know that Jesus was known for his teaching and his important truth. Thank you. Please, Sister Larry. Let me brings out how Jesus was humble, courageous, and loving. When we think about the scribes, we've learned that they were not humble. They lorded it over people, and they uh, added a lot of extra uh, laws for them to live by, but Jesus was not like that. He was always simple and humble. Yes. Brother Wilson, thank you. And we have the uh, expressions explained. Uh, to commemorate means to do something special in order to remember and honor an important event or person. It doesn't say go all out. It doesn't say yell and scream. It doesn't say do all this and all that. It just says to honor an event or a person. Thank you. And the B question for us a little more on that. What qualities of Jesus will we consider? Please, Sister Williams. We'll consider just how humble, courageous, and loving Jesus really is. And how we can imitate him. Yes. How we can imitate Jesus. Once again, uh, can't say that enough. We're going to keep going through it. We want, to, we want to leave, we want to know how would Jesus react on a situation. We'll bring that back up as we go through the lesson. It's going to help us. So, Jesus is humble. Let's go on to paragraph 3, please. Jesus introduced the memorial of his death in the presence of his 11 faithful apostles. He took what was at hand from the Passover meal and made this simple commemoration. 
he used only the unleavened bread and the wine that were already on hand. Jesus told his apostles that those two basic items symbolized his perfect body and blood, which he would soon offer up in their behalf. The apostles may not have been surprised at the simplicity of this important new meal. Why not? And the uh, reading of Matthew 26, 26 to 28, please. As they continued eating, Jesus took a loaf, and after saying a blessing, he broke it, and giving it to the disciples, he said, Take, eat, this means my body. And taking a cup, he offered thanks and gave it to them, saying, Drink out of it, all of you, for this means my blood of the covenant, which is to be poured out in behalf of many for forgiveness of sins. So, as reported in Matthew 26, 26 to 28, how simple was the memorial meal that Jesus introduced? And what did the two basic items symbolize? Please, Sister Garrett. Well, he took the bread. Um, he, took, um, he took what was at the hand from the Passover meal and made this simple commemoration. He only used the unleavened bread and the wine that was there. The bread uh, signified his body and um, wine, his blood. All right, and thank you. And let's have Brother Obay. I just wanted to touch on his humility. Um, he, uh, being being the king of uh, God's kingdom, he made something so simple and easy easy for anybody to make in a situation for in the future for his followers. And he um, he could he could have easily made it a extravagant meal and made some kind of big you know or or deal about it himself. But he kept it simple enough for his followers to follow in the future. Good point. Yes, and brother Lizarelli. Thank you. A similar thought. It was wonderful to see the uh, simplicity of the the occasion. They were already having a meal. Uh, Passover and then with the uh, implements or the um, what was already on hand then he just put it right into the uh, the new commemoration he didn't say oh take everything out now and brings all this other uh, make some elaborate change it was all there yes uh, brother Jones you're right there yeah Christendom they make ado about the cup can you imagine they make a big to-do about the cup when Jesus said that it was his body and the blood. You recall in the Mosaic law, it's the blood that really adorns or causes a forgiveness of sin. See, it's the body and the blood, not the cup. Yes, this is the point. Brother Smith, thank you. Brother As we learned earlier that Many of Jesus' followers left because they misunderstood what he was talking about when he said about the body being his bread. Had to eat, they had to eat it and wine. That, they had no understanding of what was going on. So here we see how these faithful 11 really appreciated uh, what was happening here. So it helps us to appreciate how uh, in tune you got to be as well regarding the bread and the wine. Yes, thank you. And Brother Hudson. And, and by the means of that, I know that uh, Jesus and his disciples were, you uh, um, say, anointed. And uh, that, uh, that you know, that you, like when we have our commemoration and stuff and stuff like that, that the only people that could, uh, you know, eat, you know, or drink that is people that, uh, were, that who was uh, anointed people. So, uh, he chose them for that just to be, uh, you know, that he knew that they was anointed ones. So in, in that case that uh, you have to be anointed to be able to eat and drink his bread. All right. To that simple meal, let's carry on with, uh, carry on with the lesson. We got the understanding of that simplicity and how the apostles already knew about it. Let's see, let's see what that's all about, paragraph four. Consider what happened months earlier, during the third year of Jesus' ministry, when he visited the home of his close friends, 
Lazarus, Martha, and Mary. In that relaxed setting, Jesus began teaching. Martha was present, but she was distracted with preparing a large meal for her honored guest. Observing this, <coughs> Jesus kindly corrected Martha, helping her to see that an elaborate meal was not always necessary. Later, with just hours remaining before his sacrificial death, Jesus applied his own counsel. He kept the memorial meal simple. What does this tell us about Jesus? Paragraph 4 for us is, how does the advice that Jesus gave earlier to Martha help us to understand why Jesus kept the memorial meal simple? And that's Brother Gardner. Well, he helps Martha understand that an elaborate meal wasn't always necessary. So the same goes for the memorial meal. Um, it wasn't necessary to make it big and complicated. That wouldn't contribute to the purpose of uh, commemorating his death. Great. Please, my sister here. Thank you. So we see that Jesus uh, was simply applying his own counsel. And we see that at Luke chapter 10, 40, verse 42, verses 40 through 42, you know, he says, Martha, Martha, you are anxious and disturbed over many things. So Martha became distracted with the elaboration of the meal. And so when Jesus um, instituted the memorial um, observation, he wanted his disciples to understand that the important thing was a sacrifice, not necessarily everything else that was surrounding it. That's a good point. Please, Sister Knapp. And I thought this was so interesting because it, it could have just, I kind of just thought, oh, Martha needed to sit down and pay attention and listen, but Jesus applied it to himself too. It's not uh, about anything elaborate because the spiritual aspect of the meal was what mattered. The symbolism of his death was what mattered. So Martha needed that instruction, but Jesus himself too didn't say, oh, I don't need this. This is for my followers. It applied to him also. How do you think, what do you think about the, uh, let's have Sister Smith before I come in. I was just thinking, Martha, what a privilege it was to entertain the Son of God. If I was to have that privilege, I would want to go shopping for weeks to make sure that everything was just perfect. So, and then when you think about with Jesus, after them celebrating the Passover for hundreds of years, now he was going to change and institute a commemoration of his death. These are two very important situations. But Jesus made it crystal clear to Martha and to his apostles by what he did, that being simple, keeping things simple, is much, much better than keeping things elaborate and complicated. So we can see as uh, our brother, if we continue with this watchtower, how people were in situations where they didn't have the opportunity to have anything elaborate. They, and we're as simple as possible. Yes, think about I was thinking about that, like, on online, Sister Smith there. He got his disciples with him, right? They're following it. And here they come, and, you know, to Martha's house. And, man, it could have been smelling pretty good. And Jesus said, wait a minute, wait a minute. They said, oh, no, let her keep cooking. She's doing good, doing the job. What's wrong with that? There ain't nothing wrong. And it's a special occasion. He's tried, she's trying to do more, like the sister said. So they got a good lesson right quick. She had to stop cooking basically at that time so what a teaching lesson it was the simplicity that we're going to get more into it i see some other hands uh regarding sister brown here please at the end of 40 um for a luke um 10 42 he even said for her part mary chose the good portion and it will not be taken away from her so he was showing the importance of this, that it wasn't an elaborate meal, but she was she wanted to hear what he had to say, and that was the important part. It wasn't being preoccupied with the meal. Yes, likewise today, we want to get the importance of this year's memorial celebration. Scripture, that's what this is, lesson is trying to help us to get in our mind. Yeah, we've been to many before, but uh, have we got deep into it to understand it and to appreciate as it will mention the emblems uh, more so. That's what Jehovah wants us to do this year. So this lesson will help us to understand that as we go through it a little more. Let's get into, get into paragraph five, please. 
in everything that Jesus said and did, he was humble. So it is not surprising that he showed great humility on that last night of his life on earth. He knew that he was about to offer the greatest sacrifice in human history, and that Jehovah would resurrect him to a glorious position in heaven. Even so, he did not draw undue attention to himself by requiring an elaborate observance of his death. Instead, he told his disciples that once a year they should remember him by means of this simple meal. The simple but appropriate meal shows that Jesus was not a proud person. We can be happy that humility is one of the outstanding qualities of our heavenly king. Philippians, Philippians 2, 5 through 8 reads, Keep this mental attitude in you that was also in Christ Jesus, who, although he was existing in God's form, gave no consideration to a seizure, <laughs> namely that he should be equal to God. No, but he emptied himself and took a slave's form and became human. <coughs> More than that, when he came as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death. Yes, death on a torture stake. What does the simplicity of this meal show about Jesus? And how does this harmonize with Philippians 2, 5-8? Please, Sister Thompson. It shows that he had great hum humility on his last night, the last life on earth that he uh, took a slave form and became a human to give his life for all mankind to the point of dying on a torture stake. And this shows that he was not a proud person. Yeah. And uh, Sister uh, Jackson. Well, Jesus gave the greatest sacrifice uh, that any human could give was his life. And him doing so and being in the position that Jehovah had given him, he could have drawn undue attention to himself by requiring an elaborate observance of his death. But instead, he told his apostles that once a year they should do this in remembrance of him, this simple meal for remembrance of his blood and his body that he gave for, for mankind. Yes, thank you. And Sister Milo, please. And Philippians uh, emphasizes that when it says that even though he was an uh, extremely important uh, figure in Jehovah's arrangement, he didn't uh, take that con uh, position, but he emptied himself and took a slave's form. And his life showed that all the things that he went through, he was willing to humble himself and be beat and be take that uh, abuse so that he could fulfill Jehovah's requirements for him and he could give the glory to his father and fulfill that requirement so that he could save mankind. So here his humility is emphasized and of course that's what we want to do, take that position as well. Yes. And Brother Hoyt, thank you. Yes, it showed Jesus was very humble because he, before he broke the bread and, and, bread and, and drank the wine, had the wine, he, he, he prayed, he, he thanked God and blessed the, blessed the bread and the wine before he took it. So he was honoring his father, even though it was a jury. Okay, Simple. Thank, thank you, thank you. Now let's put, pay a little more attention to the scripture there. Uh, and everything that Jesus did, said and did, he was very humble. We got that, we understand that. Uh, get to learn that more of even so. But um, how did Jesus get this mental attitude, mental attitude that we're talking about that he had? How did he get it? Please, uh, that's a uh, sister chapel. He got this mental attitude really from the way that he felt about his <coughs> father. He wanted to do whatever it took to please his father. And this is why the memorial of his death is so important because the way that he was put to death was really shameful, but he was willing to go through whatever it took so his father's name could be honored. Yes. Uh, Brother Malik, thank you. It also shows um, 
in the scripture there, in, in the reading there, at Philippians 2, 5 through 8, it shows how this is something Jesus practiced, humility. Uh, it talks about how, at verse 7, how he emptied himself, and took a slave's form, and became human. So this is something that, that he truly lived. Uh, even when we look at uh, uh, today, the contrast is that uh, Christendom puts on a big parade, blocks off streets. There's a lot of fanfare when it comes to the, this, this event. But again, Jesus was always been very humble, very simple, what he expects. Yes, thank you. Sister Moore. And also in verse 6 it says, Jesus, although he was existing in God's form, he um, wasn't trying to be equal to his father Jehovah. He, also, he knew his place, in other words. And this also showed a big deal of humility because of the world today, people are always trying to be equal with the next person. But Jesus knew um, he did not practice that. Yes. Did, did Jesus have to study like you and I? Now we prepare for the meetings, wherever weekly Bible study. Did Jesus have to do that? Some of you looking perplexed here. <laughs> Sister Fortenberry. He did. He made a point to study every day and to connect with Jehovah and talk to him. And in verse 8, it says he learned obedience from the things that he suffered. So his whole experience of being a human on this earth needing to study, needing to talk to Jehovah, suffering abuse and persecution, humbled him and made him obedient. Yes, I looked up a watchtower and it, it said that he diligently studied the scriptures. Diligently. So it made me think, do I have I diligently studied the scriptures? You know, we all read, we all study for the meetings, but he had to diligently study in order to quote the scriptures and teach others about God's word. So uh, it takes us to a deeper level of our study, does it not? Uh, we want to remember scriptures, quote them and everything. We can, if we diligently study the Bible. Uh, if you have a test for a job coming up in a day or two, you diligently study that lesson to get that job going. We know every, all the questions about that. See, so you can think about it like that. That's what Christ Jesus had to do. No, was very, very important. A good point there. Sister Joan, please. And I was just thinking too, at uh, John chapter 3, verses 15, whatever Jesus did, he told his disciples that they were to do the same thing. So that's why it says in John 3, 15, <coughs> I set the pattern also that you do just as I did. Yes. All right, let's continue on. A little more about him. Paragraph 6, please. <coughs> How can we imitate Jesus' humility? by putting the interests of others ahead of our own. Think back to the final night of Jesus' earthly life. Jesus knew that he would soon experience a painful death, yet he was deeply concerned about his faithful apostles who would soon be grieving for him. So he spent the last night instructing, encouraging, and reassuring them. Jesus humbly showed more concern for the welfare of others than for himself. What an excellent example he sets for us. How can we imitate Jesus' humility when we face trials? Sister Fudge. Well, Jesus knew that he was going to uh, experience a very torturous death. And rather than being concerned about what he was about to go through, he was concerned for his uh, faithful apostles. So he spent that time uh, encouraging them and instructing them. Perhaps we're going through a, a trial and we know someone else who might be going through a, a trial. Rather than focusing on ourselves, we can encourage that person. Yes. And uh, let's have Sister Campbell. So Jesus put the interests of others ahead of his own soul. Again, along with Sister Fudge's comment, it may take time, it may take energy, but encouraging one another is very important, and we want to take the time to be there for our fellow brothers and sisters in a humble way. Yeah, please, Sister World, thank you. When, when I was reading this paragraph, it made me think that when we're going through something, 
the tendency for imperfect humans is to have a pity party. So if I'm going through something, nine times out of ten, I'm not going to go to your pity party. But that's not what Philippians 2, 3 says. It says that we put the other person's interests ahead of our own. And that's the example that Jesus said. Within a few hours, he was going to die a horrific death. But instead of having a pity party for himself, he had an encouraging party. He strengthened his disciples for what they were going to be going through, setting a fine example for us. Yes, go over to your brother's house and have a pity party together, huh? <laughs> uh, you can get it right off your mind, as a matter of fact, when you do something like that. All right, let's go on. Jesus is courageous. We're going, we're, we'll go back around about as we go through it. Just after Jesus introduced the Lord's evening meal, he demonstrated tremendous courage. How so? Jesus accepted his Father's will for him, even though he knew that doing so meant that he would be executed for the shameful crime of blasphemy. Jesus maintained perfect integrity so as to honor Jehovah's name, uphold God's sovereignty, and open the way to endless life for repentant humans. At the same time, Jesus prepared his followers for what they would soon face. Gregor 7 for us, how did Jesus show great courage just after his, he introduced the Lord's evening meal? Please. He maintained his integrity to honor Jehovah's name and sovereignty, even though he knew that it was um, Jehovah's will that his life be sacrificed. His focus was on the needs of the apostles, not on his pending death. Yes. How courageous is that? Uh, we've never been put into that position, but Jesus is showing us uh, how to think of others. Sister Garrett? As much as Jesus Christ loved his father, he was going to be executed for the shameful crime of blasphemy. You see, so that was going to be hard for him, but he knew he had to go through that. Yes, true. Please, Sister uh, uh, Mer uh, Larry. <laughs> I was thinking about the scripture here at Luke 22, verses um, 41 and 42. It, mean, it mentions here that Jesus asked, um, Father, if you want to, please remove this cup from me. He was not saying, please don't. Put, have them put me to death, but he was he was talking about that charge of blasphemy to you to remove that if it was his will, and we see that was also um, that charge against him for blasphemy blasphemy did not come to fruition. They they uh, took it and put on the on the stake the Son of God. All right, good. And Brother Williams, let's see you have a comment. <laughs> And we can appreciate that uh, blasphemy, the, the crime of blasphemy, was a, a horrible, horrible crime. And Jesus appreciated that uh, it, would, um, it would have reflection on his father Jehovah. So that's why he, would, he didn't, <coughs> knowing that he was uh, innocent, it would still reflect on his father Jehovah. So this is why... Uh, this gave him courage to do this. Mm -hmm. And going back to the pictures from three to five, what do the pictures illustrate? Sister Chapel. The first three pictures on the second page you're talking about? Yeah. Where it shows Jesus instituting the memorial meal with his disciples. Then the death that he would suffer there on the torture stake, and also what he is now, the king. So those are the steps that Jesus went through, and not only for his disciples, but also for all mankind. So that really was courageous and humble on his part, because he knew what man was like in the beginning. Yes. A little more about his courage in paragraph number eight, please. Jesus also showed courage by setting aside any anxiety he may have had and by focusing attention on the needs of his faithful apostles. 
The simple meal, which he introduced after dismissing Judas, would remind those who would become his anointed followers of the benefits of Jesus' shed blood and of sharing in the new covenant. To help them prove worthy of their heavenly calling, Jesus told his followers what he and his father expected of them. Jesus also told the apostles of the trials that lay ahead of them. Then, pointing to his own example, he urged them to take courage. Many years later, Jesus' disciples were still following his self-sacrificing course and displaying courage. At great cost to themselves, they supported one another in their various trials. <clears throat> what did Jesus tell his faithful apostles? Was it Carthum? He mentioned to them the, the trials that they will face after his death, but most importantly, he wanted them to take courage now. Yes, yes. And in the years following his death, how did Jesus' disciples follow his example of courage? We get some experiences here. How do they go about doing this? Sister Jackson, please. They continue to follow Jesus' example with his self sacrificing course and by displaying courage because at great, it came at great cost to them and they supported one another in their various trials. So we know that they were imprisoned, um, they were persecuted, and, uh, um, and had many trials as Jesus did as well. Okay, thank you. And Sister Gardner? And the scripture at Hebrews 10 shows how that they were exposed to uh, reproaches of all kinds and tribulations. And he said that, uh, Paul said in writing to them, that at times you shared with those who were having such an experience and you expressed sympathy for those in prison and you accepted the plundering of your belongings. So they, they went through difficult things too, but they were patterning themselves after Christ Jesus. Yes. The only way they could have made it, right? Sister Gardner? I really appreciated that he prepared them just like Jehovah prepared him. Um, we see that uh, it mentioned that he would may have uh, had to set aside anxiety. And um, we experience that today. We could think, well, what if? What if this? What if that? And really, we would be just wasting time thinking, what if this happens? What if that happens? Like Jesus, we see that he was stressed. He bled, um, sweat, they, they said. He, how do you say that? He sweated blood. So um, it showed the amount of stress that he did have. But he relied on Jehovah, always praying to him. And he knew that he had to experience those things. So we have to do the same. We, know, we have to know what's ahead of us, but we still have to rely on Jehovah and not constantly uh, be so focused on what ifs. Yes. Now, how can we imitate Jesus showing courage? Likewise today, we follow Jesus' example of showing courage. For instance, it takes courage to assist our brothers who are persecuted because of their faith. At times, our brothers may be unjustly imprisoned. When that happens, we must do all that we can for them, including speaking up in their behalf. Another way we show courage is by continuing to preach with boldness. Like Jesus, we are determined to preach the kingdom message, even though people may oppose and persecute us. At times, however, we may find that we lack courage. What can we do? How can we imitate Jesus in showing courage? Please, can tell me in the back there. Yes. By assisting our, our brothers who are being prosecuted, speaking up in their behalf, and by continuing speaking up about the kingdom's truth. Good, good, yes, please. And my dear sister here. Uh, we um, when I was thinking about this, it helped me to appreciate when Jehovah allowed us to participate in the letter campaign that we were able to do with the brothers and sister in Russia. And so that was one way that as Jehovah's people that have the right to, to serve him freely, we were able to support our brothers who were being persecuted for their faith in other countries. Yes, and we can't be there, but according to Hebrews 13, 
19, what can we do? Sister Taylor? Hebrews 13, 19 talks about how we can um, pray in others' um, behalf. So all around the world, there's um, different friends in different countries. Um, and although we could participate in the letter campaign every night and every day, that we can pray for those who are persecuted in various countries who don't have at their disposal to be able to go out and preach. So we want to pray in their behalf and continue to speak up for them, but also show courage by continuing to preach ourselves. Yes, we're talking about courage, but it says here, at times we may lack courage. What do we do then? Let's get in paragraph 10. We can strengthen our courage by thinking about the hope that the ransom sacrifice of Christ makes possible for us. In the weeks leading up to the memorial, we have a special opportunity to build our appreciation for the ransom. During that time, keep up with the memorial Bible reading and prayerfully meditate on the events surrounding Jesus' death. Then when we gather for the Lord's evening meal, we will understand more fully the significance of the memorial emblems and the matchless sacrifice that they represent. When we appreciate what Jesus and Jehovah have done for us and understand how it benefits us and our loved ones, our hope grows stronger and we are motivated to endure courageously to the end. In the weeks leading up to the memorial, what should we do and why? Hudson? Well, one thing we can do is we could uh, think about uh, uh, that we have to, we can strengthen our courage by thinking about the hope of the resurrection. That's one thing. Yes, that's one thing that's true. Yes, and Brother Baker? We keep in mind also how encouraging it is when it comes to doing our memorial Bible reading that strengthens us, that encourages us. So I want to keep that in mind. Mm -hmm. And Brother Nat? That makes a big difference when we read the, um, the Memorial Bible reading the weeks before. And also we can apply this in other um, areas of life when it comes to our conventions, the um, campaigns that we have. We can maybe do some research on that, what the convention's about and why we go to conventions and, and so forth. But focusing on the Memorial here, um, it help us to um, appreciate it and to be courageous to the end of the system. Yes, you notice it says here, prayerfully meditate. Uh, of course, possibly after we read a section of it for that day, after we read it, get the understanding, and then we can pray to Jehovah uh, as we meditate on it uh, that time. Just spend some time there with, with just that section for the day, talking to Jehovah and making sure it's clear that I understand uh, what Jesus went through and uh, put it all together. And you'll find out you'll, you'll spend more time on that focus and you get more out of it before you move on to the next day or the next thought. It'll be a good thing to do. All right, let's turn our attention to paragraph number 11 through 12. So far, we have learned that the Lord's evening meal reminds us not only of the precious ransom, but also of Jesus' outstanding qualities of humility and courage. How grateful we can be that Jesus continues to display these qualities as our heavenly high priest who pleads in our behalf. To show our heartfelt appreciation, we must loyally commemorate Jesus' death, just as he commanded. We do this on the day that corresponds to Nisan 14, the most important date of the year. We can discern from the simple features of the Lord's evening meal another quality that moved Jesus to die for us. As a man on earth, he was known for this quality. What was it? What have we learned so far in our lesson? Brother Jacobs? We learned that the uh, Lord's evening meal reminds us of not only how, how precious the ransom, but also as you just outstanding qualities and ability and courage. Good, good, good. And please, don't give again. Right. And also how grateful we can be that Jesus continued to display these qualities as our heavenly high priest. Thank you. 
And it, the paragraph mentioned that to show our heartfelt appreciation, what can we do between now and the 19th? What should we be doing? Sister Garrett. We must loyally commemorate Jesus' death just as he commanded. All right. And a part of that is doing what? Sister White. I care, too, that we could uh, discern from the simple features of that meal another quality that moved Jesus to die for us. And we're going to learn exactly what that quality is. Yes. And we want to do all we can in the campaign, right? That's how we can show our appreciation. It's, it's a simple thing. Thinking about it, it's a simple thing. It takes our time. But if we really appreciate what Jesus did to us, did for us, we'd be out there uh, every, every opportunity. We've only got, you know, three and a half weeks to go. So we want to do all we can. Now Jesus is loving. You. Paragraph 13, please. Jesus perfectly reflected Jehovah's intense love for us in everything that he did. Above all, Jesus was moved from the heart to give his life in our behalf. Whether we are of the anointed or of the other sheep, we benefit from the love that Jehovah and his Son have shown to us by means of that sacrifice. Think, too, about the very nature of the memorial meal. It reveals Jesus' love and consideration for his disciples. How so? And John... John chapter 15, verse 9. Just as the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Remain in my love. 1 John chapter 4, verses 8 through 10. Whoever does not love has not come to know God, because God is love. By this, the love of God was revealed in our case, that God sent his only begotten Son into the world so that we might gain life through him. The love is in this respect. Not that we have loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son as a propitiatory sacrifice for our sins. How do John 15, 9 and 1 John 4, 8 through 10 describe the love that Jehovah and Jesus have shown and who benefits from their love? Brother Hudson? Well, he gave up his only beloved son for us for one thing. And... Uh, that uh, and Jesus gave up, gave up His life to uh, give us a chance for everlasting life. Thank you, yes, it does. Mm. Brother Jones. Mm. Mm. <clears throat> well, we remember that uh, Jesus was the Word. He was God-like. He was a God. So, as the Scriptures say, He was existing in God's form. So we have to remember that He left that and he came down here when he found out when the Holy Spirit was poured out on him everything in heaven that he did had come back to him he knew he was a human now so then he began to act like a human he humbled himself for our benefit all the way to the point of death so we have to remember that and so his love and humility was shown yes brother Hans please thank you that uh, John ten sixteen, he says, I have other sheep, those two I must bring in. So he's talking about another group uh, the the non-anointed, but still his followers, that flock, who will benefit from his love and his sacrifice. A little more on that benefit as we get to get into paragraph 14. Jesus showed love for his spirit-begotten followers by instituting not a complicated ritual, but a simple meal for them to observe. As time passed, those anointed disciples needed to observe the memorial each year, doing so under various circumstances, including imprisonment. Were they able to obey Jesus? Yes, they were. In what way did Jesus show love for his disciples? Uh, Brother Derek? Well, when he commanded them to keep doing this in remembrance of him, he, he made it that simple meal so anybody could do it at any place. Yes, we're going to get into that a little more. 15 through 16. 
Down to modern times, true Christians have sought to commemorate Jesus' death. They followed the procedure for the Lord's evening meal as best they could, sometimes under difficult conditions. Note the following examples. While in solitary confinement in a Chinese prison, Brother Harold King had to be innovative. He discreetly prepared the memorial emblems, using what he had on hand. He also calculated the date for the memorial as carefully as he could. When the time came for the commemoration, he, alone in his cell, sang, prayed, and gave a scriptural talk. Here is another example. A group of sisters imprisoned in a concentration camp during World War II risked their lives to commemorate the Lord's evening meal. However, because of the meal's simple nature, they were able to observe the memorial discreetly. They reported, We stood close together in a circle, in the midst a footstool with a white cloth bearing the emblems. A candle lit the room, as electric light might have betrayed us. We expressed anew our fervent vows to our Father to use all our strength for the vindication of His holy name. What outstanding faith they showed! And what love Jesus displayed when he made it possible for us to observe the memorial, even under difficult circumstances. How have some been able to observe the Lord's evening meal under difficult conditions? They even got the pictures. Speak on them too. Please, Sister. Well, we have the example of uh, Brother King. And this was wonderful to read. But uh, it said that he discreetly prepared for the memorial with what he had on hand. He also calculated the date of the memorial. And when it was time, he uh, sang songs in his cell, prayed, and he also gave a scriptural talk. Yes. Interesting. Sister uh, Fortenberry, uh, Brother King, or? And for, for him to be able to do this illustrates his deep appreciation for Jesus' sacrifice. I thought, if I'm in solitary confinement, could I do this? Could I calculate the date? So maybe I can work on my study habits, deeper research, making sure that I talk to Jehovah every day and have full reliance on him so that if I'm ever in this situation like he was, I can perhaps do this and absorb the Lord's evening meal. Yeah, sister said uh, what he had on hand. He had nothing on hand. <laughs> you watch the video? He had nothing. He, he made that up, made all that up. But he wouldn't have been able to make it all up and give a talk and, and do the whole nine if he hadn't studied previously and he knew how to do that. Do you know how to give a talk? Yeah, some of us do. We're going to learn how now, huh? We could be put in, he could be put in this position in prayer. He did the whole thing. That was a beautiful experience. Now, what about the sisters there, the, the other situation there in the concentrated camp there? What did they go about doing? Please, Sister Amanda. Well, they, they truly risked their lives to have this simple meal by um, um, having the white cloth on a, on a footstool. They didn't try to use electric light, they used a little candle to light, and then the, the emblems with what they had on hand. And a uh, beautiful part, they expressed their fervent vows uh, anew to continue to vindicate God's holy name. So most of us have read some of the conditions in those concentration camps. And for them to risk doing that, they knew that they could die if they got caught. But yes, they, it's admirable what they did. Yes, yeah, true. Thank you. Yes, uh, and that light, that candle you see in the picture there, uh, very risky. Mm -hmm. It was after the night. It was a real late night. That they did that, but Joel blessed them and they were able to give that. And the present day Kingdom Hall situation, a uh, very simple. All right, let's go to paragraph 17 then. As the memorial approaches, we do well to ask ourselves the following questions How can I imitate Jesus more closely in showing love? Do I think more about the needs of my fellow worshipers than about my own? <coughs> Do I expect more from my brothers and sisters than they can give, or am I aware of their limitations? May we always imitate Jesus and show fellow feeling. What questions might we ask ourselves? 
please. Brother here. Um, how can I imitate Jesus more closely in showing love? Okay, thank you. And uh, Sister uh, Tillman? Do I think more about the needs of my fellow worshipers than about my own? All right, good. Another one, please. That's uh, Sister Jones in the back there. And do I expect more of my brothers and sisters than they can give, or am I aware of their limitations? Yes. Good point. Uh, emphasize that a few times, uh, thinking more of our brothers and sisters as well, at all times, especially in our during trials. We talked about that too. This would be something that Jesus would, would do. So we always just ask ourselves, um, how would Jesus handle this matter before we go into a situation? And that will give us a little perfect, perfect of a perceptive of the, what's going on, who the person is, how would Jesus handle it. Not how I would handle it. I know how I would handle it. It'd be wrong. You see, more than time, nine out of ten times it's going to be wrong we do it. So we have to stop and ask ourselves, well, how would Jesus deal with this brother, with this sister at this time? And then we can go on by doing it. Jesus, the scriptures should uh, show that Jehovah will give us that presence of mind to think about that. Because it says here, First Peter 3, it says, fellow feelings. We want to continue to show fellow feelings. Keep these lessons in front of you, 18 and 19. The requirement to observe the memorial of Christ's death will not last much longer. When Jesus comes during the Great Tribulation, he will gather his remaining chosen ones to heaven, and the memorial will cease to be commemorated. Even after the memorial meal is no longer observed, we can be sure that Jehovah's people will fondly remember this simple meal as a symbol of the greatest humility, courage, and love ever shown by a human. At that time, those who observed this extraordinary meal will no doubt tell about it for the good of all then living. But to benefit right now from this meal, we must be determined to imitate Jesus' humility, courage, and love. If we do, we can be confident that we will receive our reward from Jehovah. Of what can we be sure? Please, Sister Liz really. <laughs> Well, we can be sure that the commemoration will not keep going on indefinitely because at that time when Jesus collects the remaining ones of the anointed ones and they're resurrected to heaven, then there won't be any more need for the commemoration of the evening meal. So it's not going to go on too much longer the way the situation in the world is today. True, true. Uh, and Brother Wilson. Yeah, this pretty much sums it up in the latter part of the paragraph. But for us to benefit right now, uh, that's why Jesus did all this, so that we can imitate him and uh, with his courage and his love. And if we do, one thing we be sure of, we will receive a reward, either a, a heavenly reward or right down here on the earth. Okay. And uh, Brother uh, Garrett? <clears throat> In uh, 1 Corinthians 11, 26, pretty much sums it up for us that we keep on proclaiming that the death of our Lord in, uh, in uh, memory of him. That keeps our lives intact. The most important question of the lesson, what are you determined to do? Brother Nat? I'm determined to show more love. And um, you know, it starts with the, the thoughts we have about our brothers and the feelings we have. Because Jesus, the thoughts he had toward them, he saw the good in them. And that's how he was able to continually show love, just as his father did. So by seeing the good in our brothers and sisters as Jehovah does, well, that's where the caring starts and being warm, that's where it starts. All right, good, good. Uh, sister, let that brother Jackson, please. Also by us remembering how simple this meal was to show Jesus' humility, his courage, his love, and the pattern that he set forth for us for 
me myself, so I'll be determined to uh, show the same pattern as well. Thank you for putting that in. What are you? That's what I want to hear. Sister Taylor? In the scripture in 2 Peter 1.10 is uh, really encouraging because it talks about, it says, brothers, if we're diligent in making um, for yourselves um, the calling and choosing for yourselves more diligent, then you will by no means ever fail. So um, if I continue to put in um, the word needed to have the relationship with Jehovah that I need to have, the paragraph assures us, it says, we can be confident that we will receive our reward from Jehovah. Very good, thank you. Please, Sister Smith. And what I learned from the lesson is always be humble in, in my heart and all of what I pray for, practice what I pray for. And what I ask Jehovah for, do what I ask Jehovah for. Okay. So this lesson has really taught me how to be humble and how to show love to all my sisters and brothers and always pray to Jehovah for this. All right, thank you. That's good. Brother, Brother Carcom. <clears throat> I'm determined to uh, speak with boldness when I go out in the field ministry, even though uh, people may slam the door in my face or shut me away from their door. I'm determined to speak with boldness and be courageous. Good. Please. Is it Bruce? Thank you. I'm determined to um, put forth <coughs> even more effort in my, in my ministry to tell others um, about what Jesus has done for us and what that sacrifice was for Jehovah and also um, Brother Smith mentioned this in his talk. If we have the desire to auxiliary pioneer, regular pioneer, now is the time. The memorial observation is not going to last forever. Yeah, that's good, good. And Brother Hoyt. This is time for y'all to testify. <laughs> but Joe, Joe is in, what are you determined to do? You want to know. I'm determined to never miss a memorial as long as I'm healthy enough to crawl down to the Kingdom Hall <laughs> and to always be able to go out in ministry and, and to all the conventions and all the spiritual food that Jehovah can serve me. Yeah. Yeah. And Brother Obai? I'm determined to glorify and sanctify Jehovah's name and by doing that, constantly talk about Jesus and, give, get, and, and Jehovah and give them the recognition that they deserve and constantly preach to reach uh, honest, hurt of one so that they can come into the fold and receive everlasting life. Good. Yes, friend. Thank you. We can go on and on. I appreciate your participation. But we all learn from what you uh, just commented on. And we can take from that and uh, use that in our uh, worship to Jehovah God. Thank you for those comments. Now, let's notice uh, the questions here. What does the memorial meal teach us about Jesus' outstanding humility? Please, Sister Gomez. Well, he didn't establish a, a, a lavish or ornate um, celebration that called attention to himself, but rather it was a very simple meal in which his concern was not for his own welfare, but for the welfare of his disciples. And how did Jesus display immense courage just after instituting the Lord's evening meal? Brother uh, Jones. After the meal, he also prepared his followers to uh, for what was going to happen and what they needed to do and what he, him and his father expected of them. Yeah. And it was courageous in the fact that he could have been planning on doing something else at that time or getting himself ready. But he went and uh, got them ready. That was a beautiful thing. In what way did Jesus show exceptional love by his simple by this simple arrangement? Brother Chandler. <clears throat> Well, this simple arrangement allowed people of whatever means and uh, whatever circumstances to be able to commemorate him. Yeah, yeah. Brother Gardner? The simple arrangement also allowed individuals participating to focus on the important part of Jesus' sacrifice and what it means for them and the love Jehovah showed rather than caught up in the, the details of the elaborate uh, pomp and circumstance, which would serve them no purpose at all. Appreciate all your comments uh, this uh, morning. And as we prepare ourselves mentally, spiritually for this event coming up, uh, it will focus and help us to think about others. And the others are those in our territory, right? 
those are the ones that we want to come and uh, celebrate with us. So we want to go beyond what is normal. This year, this Joe was asking us to do a little more in our study and preparation. Then that will give us the desire to get out there and share with them. So appreciate your comments. I know you will do that. So we'll